Hello, welcome back to our Onshape tutorial series. In this video, we're going to roll the dice a little bit, and we're going to create a standard die. Now, if you were to go to a store and buy die or buy a board game, you'll find that the most common size is what's referred to as a 16 millimeter die. There are other sizes for larger or smaller ones, but 16 millimeters is the most common one. We're going to use inches for this, which means uh, 16 millimeters is actually translated to 0 0.629951 inches. So we're just going to round that to 0 0.630 for our dimensions today. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but there's a lot of stuff going on. And because of all the spots, we got a lot of dimensioning to do to make this work. We're also going to possibly see a couple of errors that Onshape produces in this and see how to correct for those. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a sketch on my front view here, and I'm going to make a rectangle, and we're going to make it at 0 0.630, and there's our standard shape. We're going to finish that sketch, and we're going to extrude it, oh, yep, 0 0.630, and let's get that look here. There was our die. So let's go ahead and turn off the planes now with the P key, and we're going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so now we need to create all those spots that are on a die. The technical term for those spots is pips. And if you look at a die, you're going to notice that there's a pattern to the pips. The pips follow a pattern of opposing sides adding up to 7. So 1 opposite 6, 2 opposite 5, and 3 opposite 4. We also notice that 1, 2, and 3 all happen to share a corner. But if you look carefully, you'll notice that there's not any spots in that corner. So that helps with figuring out the direction that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and create that first dot, uh, pip by going to our top view and creating a sketch. And as we go through this, I'm going to be using the point tool to create all the spots. And then we're going to use the whole tool to actually make the pips. And we're going to look at using the whole tool because we're not actually going to drill a hole the way through. We're going to see how to create a hole that goes to a certain depth. So let's get started with those points. We know the first point needs to be in the center. So let's find my center point on the left, find my center point on the bottom, and use my dotted lines to say there's the center. And voila. No need to worry about the mentionings for that. Let's go ahead and exit out. Now that we've finished that sketch, let's go on to our two side, so front create a sketch here. And like I said, there's no spots here. So we need a point here and here. So let's go ahead and create those. Now we're going to dimension. You can use a dial caliper if you want to try and figure out the exact dimensions for a die that you have in your hand. You will find that different manufacturers might have slight variances in these measurements. So I'm just producing a set of measurements here based off of my own attempt to figure out where everything is, but you may want to take your own and double check to see if maybe you get something slightly different to better match one that you have in your hand. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to use 0.14 from each corner as a starting point. Now, as I've been messing around with Onshape, I have noticed something a little weird. You will see that when I set that dimension, it turned around and moved it up here. I have not figured out exactly what is causing it, and it did it down here. It moved both of them. I don't know what's going on. It's done this to me multiple times. If you're watching and you happen to have an idea for why this is happening, feel free to post a comment to the video and let me know what's going on here. But we can easily fix this. All I'm going to do is turn that dimension tool off, and I'm going to drag this back to where I want. Now notice this one, I can go anywhere. But this one, I can't go left and right. And that's because I've set a dimension. So it kind of helps to further show how the dimension tools can be used. So let's set a dimension from the top now, 0.14. And I've noticed that this weird glitch, it does not seem to happen after I reset everything. It's only the first time on that first dot that I try to do. Okay, here we go, 0 0.14. And now the twos are positioned where I want, so I'm going to finish that sketch. And we're going to go over to my right view. 
and create the three. So one, two, and let's find the center. This saves us from having to worry about the dimensions. And then let's go ahead and get these two. Now, getting used to the dimension tool can save you a lot of effort because you can set everything up to begin with. But there's obviously quite a few dimensions along here. And really, you're going to kind of learn it just by messing around. And the die is actually a really nice way to just mess around and figure it out. Or even just making a uh, cube and then putting points on it and mess with the dimensions to see how those points impact the position. Um, there's a lot of them. There's also a couple of dimensioning tools that deal with um, circular features. So you, you won't be able to do all of them with this. Okay, so now I'm in the um, back and left sides here. So let's go to the back. It shows that I see these two points here on the other side. So we're actually seeing the points on the front side. So that means this makes it a bit easy for us because what we can do is we can say, oh, the other side is two. So on this side, I need five. Now, I could try to line them up in the exact same spot to save myself on that some effort. But notice it's not highlighting that point. So I can't really dimension it to the existing point because it's on another side. It's a different sketch plane. I can't interact with it. So I'm just going to have to, again, kind of place my points where I want them. I'm not going to worry too much. And then let's find my center here. So there's my center. Okay, so let's dimension. 0.14. Notice now it's like, oh, wait a minute, you got mad at me. Okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. It seems like it's not repositioning everything. Again, it just weirdness. Okay, so 0.14. Um, now, as you get into a rhythm for this, and you'll find yourself getting into a rhythm, um, I have a number keypad on my keyboard here. So what I'm actually doing is I'm using one hand to um, create the spots that I'm using, so that marking the points that I'm using for the dimensioning. And I'm using my other hand to actually type on that keyboard. It's kind of makes it go a little smoother for me and speeds me up. Now, that rhythm uh, saves me a little bit of time because I can just kind of do it all without having to take my hand off the mouse. So now we're on the left side, so we need our, um, this is our four side. So 0.14, up, and see, now I did it again. Okay, I jinxed it. That's my fault. I'm just going to drag everything back in to where I want it. I'm, even though this is inside, I'm going to move it over because I want a little more room to see what I'm doing here. Okay. 0.14. This is probably the most tedious part of this design. It's just going through and having to enter all that information point by point. Now, I could use my vertical and horizontal dimensioning tools to maybe save myself a little bit of effort, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing it this way because I've got a rhythm going. Okay, that leaves only one spot left. That leaves the six side. So let's get back to our starting view, top, front, and right. And we're going to rotate this down to see the bottom. Now on a die, the corner here sh is shared. So there's a spot in each corner. And you will find the six runs this way. So I'm going to rotate like this and create my sketch. And I'm going to put three dots right along the top and right along the bottom here. Okay, so this one is 0.14. Is it going to mess it up? Yes, it does. Wait, where, oh, there's all my spots. Let's get those back in there. I might have to do some digging and see if I can figure out what's going on. It's, it's causing that. I'm wondering if it's because there's stuff on each side. It When I go to the edge, it's it's thinking a different side than what I'm actually wanting to do. That's, that's 
one of my best guesses as to what's going on. Yeah, that's giving me errors because I'm misclicking. Okay, and let's get this corner. 4. 1.4. And now for this one, I know it's going to be 0.14 from the bottom, or from the edge, but now from the right side, I actually want it to be 0.315, which is halfway across. Uh, and that's just a matter of the die is 0 0.630, so halfway is going to be 0.315. And so where that number came from, if you're wondering. Oop. That was a kind of a small adjustment only off by one one thousandth of an inch. Interesting that I got it so close. That doesn't always happen. Okay, so now everything's positioned where I want it. Let's get out here. Okay, let's get back to our starting view. Okay, now this kind of looks like a crazy cloud of stars in the sky. Maybe if we look carefully, um, yeah, there's kind of a rounded shape here with points. You know what? I think that's the Baby Yoda constellation. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to get some rounded edges to this because a standard die is not going to have crisp 90-degree edges. It's going to be a little more rounded. It helps with the rolling of the dice, and it also helps a little bit with safety. So let's use the fillet tool. And before... If I just use the default dimension, this is how much it's going to curve it. And that's clearly way too much for the die. So we're going to change the radius here. And for the edge, I'm going to use 0 0.0325. Now that measurement is kind of just an arbitrary measurement. All I really did is I took a die and I tried my best to figure out the radius of that curve. And it probably was not perfect. So feel free to make an adjustment if you feel it needs to be made. So I'm just going to rotate this view cube around and make sure that I've got all my edges selected. And I'm going to hit to finish. And there's my rounded edges. Now I also need to create the holes. So let's go ahead and get these holes created. Oh, wait a minute. Did it do that again? Yes, it did. Okay, so we're going to see something interesting happen here, and I'll, I'll show you what it is when we get to it. Okay, so for my hole, the default setting is usually through and simple. But we don't want to go all the way through. We want this to terminate at a spot. So we're going to change the termination to blind. And for a blind termination, I want the diameter of the hole to be 0.15. And I'm going to change the depth of the hole to be 0.0325 again. It seems to have had the dimensions. This isn't the first time that I've practiced with making this before recording the video. So it, it remembers the dimension I use. So you just need to change that if you are doing this on your own. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my points. So one, two, three, four. And notice, notice I've got this weird spot on the edge. And I have no idea where that's coming from. But it's got one there. So, and there's another one here. And it did this, it, it's, it's weird. This did not happen the first time I tried this. But the last one I did, when I was going through and checking something, it did it. And I can't figure out why it's adding these arbitrary um, spots that I did not plan for. I'm going to have to do some digging to figure it out. But I'm noticing it is creating spots all over that I did not initially create. But if I select everything from that side, you'll notice all the holes I did want are there. It's just for some reason it is creating extra holes, and I don't know why. So let's go ahead and finish this first, and then we can get to the bottom of it. Okay, so if I use my feature menu here, and I click hold over sketch 2, you'll notice that it's got a spot here, a spot here, and a spot here. But that sketch was only the one where I made it only one pip. So I need to go in and right-click on Sketch 2 in the Feature List and select Edit. And there, I've got extra points. So I'm just going to click and delete those points. And when I finish, 
that sketch, now both of those are gone. So let's go to sketch three. So sketch three only shows the two. Sketch four shows some extra spots. So let's edit that one and take out these. I am wondering if it's related to this weirdness where it was shoving the points off of my view. Maybe that is what's happening here. Okay, sketch five. Yep, there's two extra points there. So let's delete those two points. Uh, well, let me delete that one. So let's finish this. Wait a minute. What's going on? That's on sketch five. So why is it not letting me delete? Okay, let's try that again. Edit. Did I set it? Click once, delete. There we go. Now it's not letting me. It's probably because it thought I was clicking on one from the other side. Okay, so all those extra holes are now gone. We're good. Let's get back to our standard view. Okay, one last thing that we're going to do here. If you look at a die, you will notice that it doesn't match our holes. Our holes have a flat edge going straight down and then a curve inward. And on a normal die, that's not going to happen. You're not going to get that flat edge. It's going to be a more natural curve to the whole pip. So we're going to need to fill it. Now, if I select the outside edge, notice how it creates this large divot in the side, a divot that's not there on an actual die. So I'm going to click that again and, and remove it. And I'm going to move a little more carefully to select that inner edge here. Let's change our dimension. We're going to use 0 0.075 and click. And now we get kind of that more natural curve. So I'm just going to go through and click the inside. Um, I found on here that if I very carefully just go to the floor of that hole and just click, it seems to select. So I can kind of rapid fire click through this and we'll get it all done. Okay, back to my trimetric view and finish. Okay, so there are all our pips. One last thing to do, yeah, those little edges are a little unsightly. So let's get rid of all those extra lines. I'm going to click on this my view options and I'm going to go to shaded without edges so the dice looks a little more natural with all those without all those extra lines. Okay, so there's our die complete. Feel free to give this a try at home. One thing I like about this project, if you have access to a 3D printer, you can really have a lot of fun with creating custom die by making weird designs or maybe just changing up what you see. Uh, you're not restricted to just using circles for your pips. So explore that a little bit and see what you can make if, if you're able to. Thank you for watching today. It was a little bit longer, but I think we got through a lot of things, and those glitches provided an opportunity to explore a couple of features and how to make corrections. It, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up with any future tutorials here at Myth Badger Videos.